Last year we turned Owen's Diamondback Sinker 24 mountain bike into a dirt jump bike and it's been awesome. Yeah, I love this thing, it's so fun. He's been blasting laps with us back here. After hundreds of laps though, we've realized that this bike has some serious problems that are holding back his riding. So first off, Owen's front tire is actually rubbing his foot. So when he tries to do X-ups or wants to learn bar spins, he actually can't do them because the wheel hits the cranks on the way around. Next up is the cockpit. We put these sweet Deity handlebars on, but they're stock width of 800 millimeters wide. When he tries to do tables, his arms aren't long enough for the bars to actually clear his chest and can't get through to do a proper tabletop. And then the other issue with learning bar spins in the future is that his brake line isn't long enough for a full rotation. And then we have the fork. When he's riding, this thing's clacking around, making noise. And when he lands deep, it blows through the travel. And then it goes click, click, boom. <laughs> Hopefully without the boom part. So we've got something going on with the fork that we're gonna need to figure out. I always tell people to spend more time riding, less time worrying about what you need to do to your bike to optimize it or to fix things. But in this case, these are real problems that are actually holding back his riding. So we gotta get these things fixed so you can catch up to your big brother and learn these tricks you wanna learn and keep shredding. So let's get in the garage and get working on these things. Let's go! If you're wanting to take apart a suspension fork, Owen? Yeah. Most people are scared of this. Thankfully, this is a pretty simple fork. So this has what's called a cartridge damper. So I think you can handle this job. I'm confused on what a cartridge damper is. I'm sure everybody is, that's why I asked the question. I think a lot of people don't know what types of dampers there are. So I'll explain it when we get it up. See, I'm still not big enough to lift it. <laughs> so Sun Tour sent us a new damper to use here. So your damping in your fork is what controls the travel as it goes up and down. You have an air spring in the left side that is your spring. Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, you have oil. Step one, take the top cap off. What we're gonna do is put screwdriver in from each side and we're gonna pop this off. Ow. That's not good. Good news and bad news. What's the good news? I'm not sure, but the bad news is that I broke it. That's a bummer. <laughs> so we're gonna have to try to get this out and then we can order a new top cap. Okay. But we, we're still good. We can do this. Good. It's okay if I damage this piece because this is the piece I already broke. Owen's over here laughing. I think my dad's struggling a little bit. I got this. So I think if we just take it apart at this point, we'll be good. That's exactly what I was thinking and I knew that all along. Oh, he knew. So helpful to have him here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do the bottom one first, all right? We're not breaking this time, Dad. I'm not breaking anything. Okay. We're gonna be all good. You wanna take that out? It's cool showing Owen how to do all this stuff because once you know how to work on your own bike, um, you're just more connected with it and you know how to solve problems. So you can turn it vertical when you just spin it like that. Got it. Now we're gonna need to take the top cap off. Yeah. We just need to rotate the bars just a little bit so that can come out. There we go. There it is. We can just pull this off the top. Put that there, grab the new one. It looks just like it. Yep. So we got a new cartridge damper here. Like I said, all the oil and everything that controls the damping is inside this little tube. So it's basically, you know, pretty dry in there. It's just a little bit of lubrication. So I'll just snug up this bottom screw and then our damper is connected at the bottom. While we got this here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the broken piece. And we'll snug this up and then we're good. So last thing we need to do with the fork, since our top cap doesn't work anyway, is just yeah. screw this bolt in. You wanna okay. see something cool? This is a hollow bolt. Oh yeah, it is hollow. And that's where your adjuster screw goes through this and mm -hmm. actually turns a thing inside the damper to control your lockout. That's cool. We'll just snug this up and we're all good. Yay. Now that we got this replaced, should we check out your damper and see if it works? Yeah, let's all do right. it. Before we finish up this build, I wanna to talk to you about Factor, which is the sponsor of today's video. We like to eat really healthy and cook most of our food here in the kitchen. We even grow a lot of it out in the garden in the backyard with the jumps, but we're also really busy and always short on time. That's why we started using Factor last year to fill in the gaps. 
These are restaurant quality meals prepared by chefs with premium ingredients and they're shipped right to your door. They're ready in two minutes and they taste awesome, so it's even faster and more affordable than getting takeout. You pick between six to 18 meals per week, they're delivered right to your door, and you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime you want. Factor also has Gourmet Plus meals as part of your weekly options if you want to take it up a notch. Stuff like steak and shrimp, and it's even cooked perfectly too, so it's not overdone or dry or anything like that. It's awesome. So if you're busy like us, but also want to eat well, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code PORTERMTB50 in all caps to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. That's two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. Yeah! Quiet! No more clicking noise. That's awesome. Should we do the cranks next? Yeah, let's do it. So we gotta take our pedals off first to take the cranks off. Yeah. And the trick to remember when you're taking your pedals off, because one of them is cross-threaded, like it's the backwards threading, is put the wrench in and then pedal forward to take them off, so like this. And so imagine it's pedaling forward and that's gonna take the pedal off. And then when you put them back on, you put the wrench in and you pedal. backwards. That's right. Ah. That's the trick to taking your pedals off without uh, screwing them on tighter accidentally and struggling with it. So we gotta take your wheel off now. There we go. Oh, that was loud. Now we're gonna need a, the eight millimeter wrench again to take this crank arm off. Okay, that's good. Then we can slide this off. So you wanna hold it on with one hand and then pedal forwards a little harder. There you go. What? For a second I need you to hold the bike. You ready to see the new crank sewing? Those are sick. Yeah. Oh my gosh. These are the new Samox M7Js. So this is a carbon fiber crank and it comes in a 145 length. So these will actually fit your bike, fit your body. And just for comparison, check this out. That's, that's a lot smaller, that's like a whole inch. Yeah. So these cranks will actually fit you perfectly and they should solve the problem because that's more than an inch shorter. So it's really nice that this company is making cranks for younger riders that are actually gonna fit their bikes and their bodies. Yeah, those are cool. They're light, but they're also really strong. They're tested to you know enduro and downhill standards for adults. And the only place you can actually get them is samox.com. We just really wanna support companies that are making products to make kids' rides better. So these things are pretty rad. All right, let's get this chain ring on and get these on the bike. So we gotta throw the bottom bracket cups in. There's okay. bearings inside here. You can feel they spin nice and smooth. So we just throw a little bit of grease in here. So tighten that way as if you're pedaling backwards. There we go. I'm used to lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. The reason they do this is so things don't unscrew themselves while you're pedaling. So we can hold the cup up to the tool we used for the other one. Looks like it's a little big. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, doesn't fit that one either. I don't think we have the right tool for this, but I have a solution. You can use channel locks. You'll kind of uh, mess these up a little bit, but I have a better idea. So we can put a pipe tool around here, snug it up, and this will actually work. Oh, it is. Yep, so we're tightening it up. You're actually using your brain for something. I try to sometimes. <laughs> so this doesn't do any damage to it, which is nice. Now we got the bottom bracket on. It's cool we figured out a way to use a different tool, right? Still yeah. get the job done with no damage. Mm -hmm. So bottom bracket's in, slide the cranks through. We got some grease on the spindle there. All right, so just put it right through. Yep. All right. There you go. Oh, that is satisfying. Now we'll put this on the other side. It's already got grease on it as well. Got to line up your cranks straight. See, Otherwise, I don't like this. Yep. <laughs> then we just have this little lock ring right here. So what this does is it makes it so there's no gap. Right now they're kind of clicky. So we just screw this in and it snugs it up so there's no space, no clicky. And then there's a little set screw right here that you can tighten up. Let's get our pedals back on now yeah. and the back wheel. A little bit of grease on here because the cranks are new. These are the Deity T-Mac pedals, all time favorite pedals for all the bikes. They're the best. They're strong, but they also have a nice amount of concave in there so that your foot actually sits down into the pedal. That's why they feel so good. I like working on bikes with you, Owen. Me too. Oh, there we go. So it's a narrow wide chain ring, so you have to, it only fits in one way. We're back in action. 
Okay, let's pop this thing off the stand and then we'll work on the final fixes for this bike. Yay! All right, that looks like a lot more clearance and now your back of your front wheel doesn't hit your toe anymore when you turn. Yeah, that's nice. So we'll take your grips off, three millimeter. So there's a lot of debate on how wide should your bars be. And it's really based on what you're riding and how big is your body size. It kind of comes down to what feels comfortable, first of all. So you can just throw your hands out and see where it feels best. So we'll take an inch off each side. Sounds good to me. So we can do this the normal way, or we can do it the fun way. A Let's do it the fun way. Yeah. Definitely. So if you remember from our older videos, Owen called the Sawzall the death slicer when he was really little. What's this tool called again, Owen? A death slicer. So that's your favorite tool, huh? Yep. I like your names for the tools, Owen. Thanks. This is obviously not the standard way to cut bars, but it sure does sound like fun. And we're not savages, we're gonna use a cutting guide. So first we'll mark one inch where we're gonna cut it. Hey, hey, I feel happy when I touch this thing. This is a really dangerous tool, so you gotta be careful with it, okay? Do I pull down at all? You don't need to push down too far, but you can push the guard up against that and then it won't jump around. Are you ready? Oh, stop. We don't wanna cut our bolts off. This thing will cut through anything, hence the name Sawzall, and that worked sweet. That did work really well. There's always a more fun way to do things. <laughs> you ready for side number two? Yeah. You gotta be super careful with it though, right? I uh, don't totally listen to you, Dad. And then slide the guard up. There we go. Ready? Three, two. I like that. There you go. That's easy. That's really fast. We got like NASCAR tools going on right now, don't we? What are I thinking about when I do that? Barrel of monkeys. Is that good? Yeah. Feels great, huh? Let's see how the bars feel, Owen. They feel really good for right now. Nice. Let's measure and see where we ended up. 26.25, which for everyone else on the metric system is 666 millimeters. That's the number of a beast. Big Iron Maiden fan here. Uh, while we got your grips off, let's go ahead and swap your brake really quick too. Sweet. You have to slide it off. I actually found one in the parts bin that I took off a uh, cross country build that I had. And so it's the same brake, uh, Magura MT-8 which is a cross country brake. Uh, it's just a two piston, but that's plenty of power for dirt jumping. This is up to my nose. How tall is this thing? Taller than me, almost. So that should be plenty to get him a full bar spin. And then if you pre-wind it, you can probably get two out of it. Coming in hot. It's nice that you know what you want now and can get it set up. Yeah, this is sick. Up. There you go, and you can ride like that, and you can still rotate it more if you need to for an X-Up. And it looks good, it's nice and clean. The width of the bars feels good now, like that looks more normal for you. It does. So we basically right-sized everything on this bike. So now the cranks are the right size, the bars are the right size, and then the brake cable's the right size for the tricks he wants to do. And we fix the suspension, don't forget the suspension. And we fixed the suspension, that was Honestly, the most annoying part for me is just listening to him ride out there, clack, clack, clack. So we got to get out and test this thing out and see if it works like you thought it was going to. No more clicky clacky. Nice work working on your bike, Owen. I'm proud of yeah. him for learning all this stuff. It's really cool. And these are going to be skills that he can use moving forward as he grows up and continues to work on his own bikes and is less reliant on me. You want to see if it feels better? Yeah, let's go see. All right, test that on the pump track first. Get a fork test. No noise. Nice, nice and quiet. Yeah, it's nice. How do the bars feel? They feel good, they don't catch. It's the right width and stuff? Yeah. And then uh, brake cable's long enough. How do the cranks feel when you pedal? They feel a little weird because I'm not used to them, but they're nice. 
Yeah, it's gonna feel different because they're quite a bit shorter, but I think you'll get used to them really quick and so I think you'll be good to go. Sweet. You wanna test out the jumps? Looks to me like he's feeling pretty comfy on the bike. It should just be these nice refinements that make a bike that already felt good feel even better. Well, first lap through the jumps uh, went great, huh? Yeah, they're fun, feels good. You wanna try out a table and see if it works a little bit better for you? Yeah. These changes to Owen's bike worked out perfect. I'm super pumped that it did because you never know when you dig into a bike if you're gonna run into other issues, but uh, these went well. Owen's out having a blast riding, doing laps right now. Like I've said before, I'm a really big fan of slow progression. That's why we didn't make these changes before. I really didn't want him focusing on tricks. I wanted him focusing on riding, jumping, whipping, pulling up, you know, pushing through jumps, learning a bunch of different ways to ride jumps. And that gives you the confidence to just be a better rider. And once you're a better rider and you can ride the jumps really well every time, then the tricks actually come pretty easy. Now he's at that point where you can start unlocking new tricks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next adventure. Here comes Owen again.